And one of the reasons I've preached DMT so furiously is I just want a larger body of people to take it so that we can compare data. Uh, we need to understand, you know, how is this possible? It raises a whole host of questions. One is, not only how is this possible, but then given that it is possible, how has it been kept secret? The thing that so pleases me about DMT is, you know, a lot of people will not take a psychedelic like LSD or psilocybin or something because it lasts hours and hours. Inevitably, a thing lasting that long, you're going to end up dealing with your stuff, your anxiety, your fear, your this and that. And a lot of people don't care for that sort of thing. Whether that's good or bad is another issue. With DMT, it lasts four minutes. And so how, how lost in an examination of childhood trauma can you get in four minutes, especially when you have hundreds of elves tugging at your coat sleeves? The way to get off on DMT is after you feel completely peculiar, you have to do one more enormous hit. This is where courage comes in. Most people, they take it and they say, it's, it's working. This stuff feels really weird. It's really working. You say, do one more hit. And they say, no, no, it's working. You say, no, do one more hit. So then you do, or we say you do. You penetrate that membrane and you go through a series of like, to me it's like a ramp, but it's like a series of diastolic compressions that push me forward. Birth canal analogy, obviously. And then I break into the elf dome, or the hive, as I call it. And then after about three, four, five minutes, it retracts. It loses its uh, vitality, and it l begins to pull away from you almost like a boat pulling away from a dock. And in fact, I had one trip where, metaphorically, not having hands, they all turned and waved and said, déjà vu, déjà vu, which is, of course, absurd.